Here we are coming into a medium speed corner. We're on the brakes hard with the wheel straight, but still giving a little bit of gas to keep the turbo spooled up. This is causing the weight of the car to be transferred from the rear to the front, giving the front tires more traction and the rear tires less. This balance is critical for the next step. Now that the rear tires are loose, we're going to turn in with the steering wheel inducing some oversteer, while gradually reducing the amount of brake input and staying light on the gas. This makes sure the rear of the car is light and will still slide enough so that the car is pointed down the course. This next part is where all-wheel drive comes in handy. If the rear of the car isn't sliding enough, we can give a little gas causing the rear tires to spin, which will cause more oversteer, like a rear-wheel drive vehicle. Since it's all-wheel drive, we'll give it more brake, reducing the front tires from spinning and causing understeer, like a front-wheel drive car. If the opposite is happening and there's too much oversteer, then we can let off the brake, point the steering wheel where we want to go, and get on the gas. All three of these inputs will put more weight on the rear, increasing its traction and stopping the oversteer. This is near identical to front-wheel drive cars. Now this is where we want to be. We've reached a late apex with the car completely done turning. Wheels are straight and we're completely off the brake. It should be noted that even though a standard race line is the fastest way through a corner, where the apex is right in the middle of a turn, you have to use the entire road to do it right. In rally, there are too many variables including grip and not knowing exactly what the course looks like. Having a late apex still lets you get on the throttle early, but also gives you a margin of error to account for the unknown variables. At this point, we are wide open throttle ready to tear down the course.